potato that we just used. No, it's fine. It's fine in the, the fine in the in St. Stephen. This doesn't normally happen, but today's gospel is the St. Matthew version of the gospel of yesterday. These feasts are going to the ninth the Sunday after Pentecost. And that was from St. Luke. Oh, I see. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same. Yeah, let's go to the gospel. Thank you. Let's read just the gospel. Thank you. From the St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to the scribes and the Pharisees, Behold, I send you, send to you, Behold, I send to you prophets and wise men, and scribes, and some of them you will put to death and crucify. And some <clears throat> and some of them you will put to death and crucify, and some you will scourge in, in your synagogues, and persecute from city to city, and that upon that you may come all the, the just blood that hath been shed upon the earth, from the blood of Abel the just, even to the blood of Zacharias, the son of, <clears throat> of Barachios, whom you kill between the temple and the altar. Amen, I say to you, all these things shall come upon this upon this this generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that would that that thou killest the prophets, and stonest them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered together thy children, as the hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and thou wouldest not. Behold, your house shall be left to you as desolate. For I say to you, you shall not see me henceforth till you say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And then that's where the word of today's holy gospel. And upon this end, just a few considerations. <clears throat> the, the prayer of the time of the persecution. And then today, the finding of the body of St. Stephen, the miraculous finding of his body. But in the collect of the masses <clears throat> today, in the very. That we pray for the, the, the grace to be able to imitate St. Stephen in praying for and loving our enemies. Because in the, in the first death of the martyr, the first martyr, the very first martyr after the Lord Jesus Christ died was St. Stephen. He is the proto-martyr. The very first one to be killed for Christ after the resurrection, the crucifixion and resurrection. And while he was being stoned to death, our Lord made a prophecy that I, the Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou, thou wilt stone those that are sent to thee. And that it only, only this powerfully was made on Palm Sunday. And it was only a very short time later when Stephen the deacon was sent to Jerusalem after the resurrection and victory of Christ and he would be stoned to death. So that remember that our Lord's prophecies are all fulfilled and, and that he says these things literally, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that, that killest the prophets. And they were all, from Abel all the way up until Zacharias who was, was martyred shortly before the time of Christ. And the, the blood of these but then what is the conclusion of it all and here again the dogma of our faith the conclusion of it all that, that when our saint stephen was going to be martyred he opened he saw heaven what did he see at the time of his martyrdom he opened he saw the heavens open he saw the glory of god and when he spoke of the glory of god and i have seen god in the heavens and he saw the glory of god and the Jews were filled with such anger and hatred that he was speaking of the glory of God that they stopped up their ears. They screamed with a loud voice so they wouldn't hear what St. Stephen was saying. And now we're in a time, and this is happening to the entire church, that people, when the glory of God is truly being spoken of, 
with his true his true rights, his true privileges, his true greatness is being spoken of, the people of the world today stop up their ears. They then grabbed St. Stephen violently and with great haste took him out to be stoned to death. And it was a Pharisee, a Pharisee who, uh, was, who was trained by the, the Gamaliel. He was, Saul was not only of, uh, of the Pharisees, but he was actually a Pharisee who was trained by one of the few good Pharisees. Gamaliel was considered to be a saint. Gamaliel was, was a very holy Pharisee who died before Christ, who could ever speak to Christ, but he was holy and knew the things of God, and he trained Saul. But Saul, though he was trained by the great Gamaliel, he would not benefit from him. He was trained by the great one, but he himself did not benefit. Just like in our situation in the church, we have many children of Archbishop Lefebvre, and the, the great prelate of the 20th century that saved the Catholic priesthood. And many of his sons are trained by the Great One, and yet they act as Saul of Tarsus. And Saul of Tarsus, who was trained by the Great One Gamaliel, what did he do? When he saw that Stephen was, was communicating the divine truth, and he would have recognized those words, he should have recognized what Stephen was saying. But when Stephen spoke of the heavens, and when Stephen spoke of the clouds being opened, and when Stephen spoke of the things of God, Saul should have recognized that's how Gamaliel used to talk to me when I was a young man. That's how Gamaliel taught me. But instead, he didn't, he didn't remember Gamaliel. He didn't remember anything Gamaliel had said. He was so filled with blindness and hatred that he gladly guarded all of the cloaks. So St. Augustine tells us, Saul was filled with a greater maliciousness, a greater wickedness than those that picked up the stones. For he did not want to only throw a stone at, at Stephen. He wanted to be responsible for every stone. And he wanted to be responsible for every whack upon Stephen that would bring about his death. And therefore Saul, in order that he might participate in all those that stoned him to death, agreed to guard all their cloaks and watch them, so that he would participate in all those who took off their cloaks and put it at the feet of Saul. And Saul did not himself lift a stone. Saul did not himself throw a stone. But he was responsible for every stone that was thrown, and Saul was filled with a great joy every time he heard, he saw the stone hit Stephen, and he saw the agony upon uh, come to Stephen, and he blinded himself to the words of Stephen, which he should have been familiar with, since he was a great, he was a side disciple of, of, of Gamaliel. But what did St. Stephen say? Lay not this sin up to their charge. And what was on the face of St. Stephen when he was being martyred? He was filled with a great joy, and his contemplation were of the things of God. And this is how we are supposed to be in the time of persecution, and how we are supposed to be when they come to arrest us, and when they come to put us to death and put us to prison, and when they attack us on every side. Like, for instance, in our present situation here, uh, being consecrated a bishop only a few days ago, now they're trying to spread throughout the, the Internet as much as possible, there's no bishop, no bishop, no bishop, no bishop. So that Bishop Pfeiffer was not actually consecrated validly a bishop because when Bishop Webster said the words that he was, that it didn't sound right on the recording and that maybe the words weren't right and there might have been a mistake in a couple of the words during the time of the, the key words of the valid form and therefore this, he's not a bishop. The Bishop Webster unsuccessfully attempts to consecrate Father Pfeiffer to, to the episcopacy and try to create confusion and spread it throughout the world. But what did St. Paul himself say after he became St. Paul? He said, be slow to wrath, slow to wicked judgment, and, be, and, and quick to doing good things, but slow to wrath. Because Saul himself, when he was younger, he was very fast to wrath, and it caused him great trouble. And when you take the the uh, the recording of the of the uh, the, 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 the consecration of a few days ago is very clear. We had an actual recording because there's a recording coming from the lapel mic of the bishop that was made, as well as a regular recording which is coming from the, with all the outside sound of the fans and all of the, uh, the outside noise of the people and so on. And so we got a recording with the actual uh, direct recording of the lapel mic of, the, of, of, the, of the lapel mic of Bishop Webster. And he did say each of the words of the, of the form of the consecration correctly and validly. And then, of course, also those who were familiar with St. Thomas Aquinas recognize that what is, the, what is the rule of the church about the validity of the sacrament? When a minister, a priest celebrating mass, or a priest doing a baptism, or doing the consecration of a bishop, or the ordination of a priest, or administering any sacrament, 
when they were saying the words of the sacrament, if any ordinary man can tell they were saying those words, they were saying the words that are in that book, and they were pronouncing the words in that book to make a consecration happen, or make an ordination happen, or make Christ present upon the altar, and any, any ordinary man could tell that the, the, uh, the, the, this is what, these are the words he was, he was striving to say, and therefore it's, the, the sacraments are valid. However, he did say all the words correctly anyway, but in the recording, it doesn't come out perfectly. And then uh, because one word appeared to be not perfectly said, uh, when, we, when we listened to the recording, uh, before it was perfectly cleaned up, one word didn't appear to be perfectly said. So Bishop Webster said, well, just go ahead and do the matter in form all over again, which we did. We went back in the chapel the next morning and did the matter in form all over again, though, because one word may have been slightly mispronounced. It turned out that it wasn't. As we, as we cleaned up the the uh, the, the the consecration uh, uh, audio, however, the uh, to make sure that there was no possibility of any room for any doubt, this was done, and then uh, it was though it was not necessary to do so, and then of course, but what happens? There is going to be a continual attack and assault; it will never cease. And if they run out with this one, they'll come up with another one. And there are many souls looking for whatever evil they can find, and whatever question they can find, and whatever doubt that they can find, because they are not looking for the things of Christ, not looking for the truth. Now what is to be had? One possible reaction is a normal reaction, which is to become angry and to become violent. But this is not the reaction of St. Stephen. This is not the reaction of the church. We have to recognize that there is going to be always some kind of an attack against everything that is done for Christ. Now, there have been so many bishops consecrated in, in, the, in, the, in the tradition. Remember how Father Chicago said there's a bishop in every garage. And one thing we did make sure that before we, before we had the consecration last year in preparation, we built a new garage. The only thing is our garage doesn't have a concrete floor. Our garage is a cheap garage. Our garage is, it doesn't even hold cars. So our garage is a, not exactly a high-quality garage. But since there's a bishop in every garage, said Father Chicada, and, and, and maybe one day Father Pfeiffer will be consecrated to bishop, you might as well have a garage. Maybe an ugly one, but at least I can say I've got a garage. Now the fact is that they, we don't have all the things that others have. But what is the essential thing to have? The truth of our faith, the priesthood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the angels know in heaven that Father Pfeiffer is now Bishop Pfeiffer. And the devils know in hell that Father Pfeiffer is now Bishop Pfeiffer. And, 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 and the power of the priesthood in its fullness is here. And it is given by God, given through Holy Mother the Church. And it stands. And that, and that, but there will always be some who have something wicked to say about it. It will never change. Our Bishop Marla Tel Afev, what do they say about him? He was not a valid bishop. Now, there were thousands of bishops, not thousands, hundreds and hundreds of bishops consecrated during his time. Hundreds and hundreds consecrated by Masons. And yet, what did they say? Only one bishop is invalid. Now, there are thousands of bishops throughout the world. But, Bishop Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, he was ordained a priest by a Mason named Cardinal Bishop Lionheart. He was consecrated a bishop by that same mason called Cardinal Lionard. And Cardinal Lionard is supposed to have said before he died that he withheld his intention on his ordinations. And therefore, Cardinal Lionard and Bishop Lionard ordained hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of priests. But only one of them was invalid, and that was Marcel Lefebvre. He consecrated many bishops, but only one of them was invalid, and that was Marcel Lefebvre. And the other ones they don't worry about. The other ones they don't look up. The other ones they don't check every detail. Why don't you check the list of all the cardinals and bishops? If you want to check the line, Lionheart may have consecrated another bishop who was a bishop that consecrated Took. And then Took, therefore, would be uh, an, 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 an invalid bishop. And maybe all the others are invalid. And what about all the heretical bishops throughout the last 2,000 years? So many heretical ones. But they always have a question about this person, or a question about that person, and they don't worry about anyone else. On the human level, this is illusion reason, this is foolishness. However, we are here for the kingdom of Christ. Let the enemies attack as they wish, 
let the enemy say whatever lies they wish to say. Let them dig and dig and dig and pull out their state-of-the-art software and try to find out everything they can find out about the pronunciation of words and letters and how you pronounce the letter I and how you pronounce the letter O, how you pronounce the letter U, and make sure that, that uh, there is a proper pronunciation. And yet they don't worry about it. Where is the consecration video of Bishop Dolan? Where is the consecration video of, of these other bishops? Where are they? The fact is that there's not a questioning of all these other things, though that there's a foolishness in this kind of questioning, and we shouldn't be worried too much about it. But nonetheless, the, the, you're in a battle of the faith, and we are to not be too overly distracted. We're here to spread the kingdom of Christ. We're here to spread the holy faith, to administer the sacrament of confirmation when necessary upon those who are prepared to administer the sacrament of holy orders, and to be able to spread the faith to souls throughout the world in this upcoming crisis. We are in the same crisis of Vatican II, but now it's made a shift. A shift now to being now Vatican II with persecution. Vatican II with isolation. Vatican II with, with the priests having to go from door to door. And we're, good in, we're now entering the age of persecution. And so in the age of persecution, we'll have to operate slightly differently than in the age of non-persecution. And so we're entering into the age of persecution. And one of the temptations as you enter the age of persecution is to respond with anger. Anger against the wicked leaders of the government. Anger against the wicked magistrates. Anger against the, the, the wicked ones that are coming to destroy our homes. Coming to destroy our livelihoods. Coming to destroy our faith. Coming to rip us out of our churches. Coming to destroy us in every way. And St. Stephen, this feast of the, of the, of the invention of St. Stephen, the finding of St. Stephen's body, we read about St. Stephen that he made sure that as his persecutors were attacking him, as they were killing him, he had no anger in his heart. Furthermore, he loved his enemies, and he prayed for them. And this is a great grace we pray for in the College of the Mass today, that may we have the grace to love our enemies as St. Stephen loved them, to pray for them as St. Stephen prayed for them, because he is the example of all the martyrs of the last 2,000 years. And there are millions and millions of Catholic martyrs, with those that find themselves in the kingdom of heaven as true martyrs. Each of them loved their enemies. Each of them prayed for their enemies, and through their death and through their martyrdom, were able to bring about the salvation of many souls. For the blood of martyrs is the seed of Christians. Now there are two kinds of martyrdom. There is the red martyrdom and the white martyrdom. The red martyrdom is a martyrdom of blood, the most sacred of the martyrdom, by which we are able to be really, really killed by our enemies. And the other is a martyrdom of 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 the words of men, the wicked martyrdom of being assaulted, maligned, cursed, and blasphemed. And as our Lord Jesus Christ said, Blessed are you, and men shall revile you and persecute you for my name's sake. This is the white martyrdom. And this white martyrdom all Catholics today must experience. If you are living the faith in your family, you will be mocked by the members of your family. You will be mocked by your friends and by those that are your neighbors. You will experience a white martyrdom. If a girl today dresses like a girl, she will experience a white martyrdom. If a man acts like a man, he will experience white martyrdom. If one acts according to the gospel and lives according to it and speaks in the manner of the gospel, he will experience a white martyrdom. More than our ancestors did in the past, except in the time of the great persecutions. And now we're entering into such a great persecution now. And remember, as we're assaulted for having the Holy Roman Catholic faith, as we're assaulted for doing that which is right before God, there shouldn't be any kind of frustration or any kind of anger inside the heart. But we proceed forward with joy. And why do we proceed forward with joy? Because we have Christ within us. We have the true faith within us. And we have the answer to all the world's problems within us. We have the great treasure of all treasures, the pearl of great price within us. And with these things, how can we be upset? And furthermore, we are protected by our Holy Mother. The Blessed Virgin Mary is our protection. The Blessed Virgin Mary is our life. The Blessed Virgin Mary is everything to us. And as long as we hold her rosary, always hold her rosary. Make sure you never travel all the rosary in your pocket. Because the rosary does not only have power when you say it. It's very physical presence, this power to fight against the devil. And the Holy Scapular that says we belong to her. Let us have that Holy Scapular always upon us. So that she might use that scapular and that rosary to defeat our, our enemies in hell, the, the principalities and powers, the lords of this darkness. And that we should proceed forward with peace, proceed forward with joy, proceed forward with confidence in Our Lady, and confidence in Our Lord, and confidence in Our Holy Faith. So in any case, we will proceed uh, in, the, in this battle 
trying our best to imitate, though we are humanly weak and get frustrated sometimes. We'll try to avoid that. But though we're humanly weak and frustrated sometimes, we'll try to imitate, as the church says today in the Holy Collect and in the spirit of the Mass today, let us imitate the joy and the love and the prayer and the confidence of St. Stephen, the first martyr. And then we can also go with his glory and see him, be with him in the kingdom of heaven. Those are going to you all in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.